Examples, of course, of control would be would be name calling, would be putting down somebody all of the time. Now, obviously, people are going to have moments where they don't get on and there's going to be things said coercive control is not that coercive control is exactly as i said it's control by one person of the other through subtle bullying constant put downs all the time how do you prove it because there's no bruise there's no broken bones but what you do is you reach out because now coercive control is accepted by the courts there is legislation providing for domestic violence protection for emotional and psychological abuse and in fact, it's now recognised as a criminal offence in this country. So once, once the, the, the solicitor's role is engaged with regards to family law, there seems to be, there's a sudden rush with regards to the start of the process. And there's lots of paperwork and there's lots of questions and there's lots of filing of financial statements. And while that's very much part of the court process, and you're kind of probably going through it in a very kind of a robotic sense because this needs to be done by a certain date for the court or for the lawyers or for the barristers. You've got to remember that behind all of this, this is a relationship breakdown. So you've got to keep focused on your priorities so much as you can or things will go so off course and that's where it really gets hard for clients. This is a huge emotional roller coaster for a client. So it's not for me to be your best friend during this journey. I have to remain objective. I'm not going to agree with everything that you ask us to do. I will agree to some things. We're aware of the requirements of the court process. That's here for us to do. You need to know that we're going to be objective. And when you ask us to do something, it's got to be in the best interest of resolving this in the best way for you, for your children, for your ex, so that it doesn't become an unsustainable battle for you to be able to cope with. So with regards to the increase in domestic violence that we've seen, particularly since COVID restrictions have been imposed, we've seen a significant increase in what's described as coercive control. So I suppose generally the traditional domestic violence images would be of shouting and screaming and physical assaults and guards being called um, and general hysteria. Coercive control is a very sneaky, subtle bullying type of control that takes over silently, sometimes within a house where the outs to the outside it appears that there's absolutely no problem. So as a victim of domestic violence, the first thing that you need to do is to reach out, be it to your doctor, your friend, your mother, your sister. Again, COVID has stopped people having that option to go and meet people and discuss it. So when you go to court, it's a very private, it's a very dignified process. You are on your own in the courtroom, just with the judge and the registrar. It's not a public court. There's no intimidation. There's no room for fear in the court. The reason that you're there is because you've lived with that fear. So you go and you make your application and you get the options available to you from the court to give you the protection that you clearly need.